Hello, everybody. My name is Jody Scholar with Chicago White Metal. Thanks for joining our webinar today. Uh, we're going to give just a few more seconds to start uh, while some other people finish logging on, but uh, uh, certainly appreciate you joining us. Okay, it looks like that's the most of the people that are going to be logging on, so we'll go ahead and get started. Again, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk today about uh, value-added operations for die casting. A um, couple of housekeeping notes just to let you know all the phones of the attendees are on uh, uh, listen-only mode. So if, uh, if you've got a question, we'll talk about how to do that here in a second, but I uh, just want to let you know that if you, if you shout out a question, that may be uh, tough for us to hear. Um, so today we're going to talk about everything except die casting. So all the other operations that go on to a, a project uh, once a part is die casted or even before a part uh, becomes die casted. So we're going to get started. Jam packed with information today, so I hope you enjoy it. And uh, please, uh, as I'll tell you in a minute how to submit questions, please go ahead and do that. So just a quick overview of myself. Uh, again, I'm Jody Scholard. I'm the Southeast Sales Manager for Chicago White Metal. I've uh, been with the company almost 10 years next month. Um, also joining us today are Mike Dimitrov and John Miller. They'll be able to, uh, to handle all the questions that, uh, that, that come up and that you throw out, out at them. And we'll show you how to do that right here. So on the bottom right of your uh, uh, webinar screen, the, uh, the GoToWebinar screen, you'll see a box that says questions. So just type in your question, hit send, and one of our uh, experts, John or Mike, will get back to you with, uh, with an answer. Um, even after the presentation is over today, if you have any questions, please uh, uh, continue to submit them. We'll keep the line and the, the webinar active. Uh, after the presentation is over, and so feel free to continue to uh, uh, to ask questions. Also, my contact information will be at the end, and if you have any questions that come up after the webinar, you can uh, feel free to, to contact me directly. So just a little history of the webinars that Chicago White Metal have uh, has produced over the last, oh, I guess we've been doing this four, five, six years, something like that. Um, so you can see the list uh, of, of webinars that we have. All of these were recorded at the time that we did them live and are on our website. So if you want to go to the uh, uh, Design Center portion of our website, uh, look for the webinar section and you will see these all listed. Um, and you can, you can click on them and listen at your convenience if you missed them the first time. But we went through uh, pretty much from soup to nuts for die casting, uh, kind of a die casting 101, surface finishing, uh, all the way through different alloy types. Um, and to today. So today, again, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the various value-added processes that can be done uh, for die casting. So the agenda for today is we'll look at, uh, again, this is, this is everything except the physical casting of the part. So we'll start at, and look at engineering services that are available um, that can be done ahead of a, uh, a project during the early development phase. Uh, we'll talk about machining, both CNC and some uh, what we call conventional machining, dedicated custom cells, that type of thing. We'll look at a number of different surface treatments that can be per performed on a die casting. We'll talk a lot about that today. Um, we'll talk about assembly. So once you have a die casting and it's coated and uh, perhaps there's some sub-assembly components that would make sense to, uh, uh, to be provided on a die cast part uh, before it comes to the customer. We, we have those capabilities and it's a, uh, it's a great option if, if you'd like a sub-assembly to come to you. Also talk about custom packaging. Uh, there's various uh, options for that depending on uh, uh, part complexity and what the, what the requirements are. And then we'll look at some, uh, uh, some advanced quality inspection methods, um, leak testing, x-ray, and some custom gauging that, uh, that can be done if needed. So here's a, an outline of some of the engineering services that we'll talk about. Um, again, design support. Uh, we like to be involved as early as possible in a project, um, working and collaborating with the customer, talking about design, talking about how to modify the design for, for better manufacturability, uh, looking at ways to reduce cost. That's a big portion of, uh, of the early uh, support that we can provide in the project. We'll talk about the prototype options for die casting. We'll talk about uh, um, the tool design, some of the things that we incorporate into tooling, uh, including the MagmaSoft flow, flow simulation and analysis that we do on every new project. We'll talk some about that, as well as the uh, APQP uh, project management support that we provide. Uh, it's a great system that we have in place, uh, helps manage a project from start to finish, provides weekly updates to the customer, and, and so forth. So we'll talk about those in a little more detail. 
Again, the design support, um, as I mentioned, we really strive to be involved as quickly as possible uh, in the start of a new project. We feel that uh, the working relationship that we could have with the customer um, really helps us and helps you fine tune your part, get it ready for production, look for ways to, uh, to reduce costs, um, and some of the means we, we have to do that. Technical sales uh, for the different areas of the country, that's, that's my, what my role is. Uh, so when I see a new project for the first time, I can take a look and see uh, if there's things that maybe uh, from an up, up front standpoint we could change or, or add to or modify to make, uh, make things uh, a little easier and a little cost, more cost effective. Uh, we do uh, numerous, numerous uh, go-to meetings and, and online uh, support with, with customers on a new project to, to really have everybody look at it one time and look at the part and the model and try to figure out the best ways to do things. Um, the, again, the part design and design for manufacturability uh, a lot of times ends up being able to reduce costs from one way or another, whether we um, take an, uh, a project that has two or three die-cast parts together or maybe a die-cast part and a stamping or another component that you could redesign to have that be a one-part die-cast. Um, it's a, obviously a great way to reduce complexity, reduce cost, um, and, and that type of thing. So we, we really focus on those at the, uh, the upfront stage of, uh, of a project. Some of the prototype options that are available, uh, Chicago White Metal has an in-house uh, FDM or fused deposition modeling uh, machine, which is basically a 3D printer um, that, we can, that we can utilize to help uh, get an early part made for you. Um, we also have in-house CNC machining, so potentially uh, uh, if you're looking for a small number of parts, maybe, I don't know, two, three, five, something like that, maybe it makes sense to, to machine a part out of a billet alloy like 6061 aluminum or uh, the billet alloy is available for mag and, and uh, magnesium and zinc. Uh, we can help support that uh, um, internal at our place. We also have vendor partners that we utilize for some of the other um, more common um, prototype options, rubber plaster mold, investment cast, spin cast, and machine from solid, which we just talked about. Um, each one has its own pluses and minuses. Uh, and it, a, lot of the, a lot of it really depends on what you want to get out of your prototype. Are you going to be doing testing? Or are you just looking for a fit form function type part? Um, it really depends on, on what you're going to be doing with the prototypes and we would help you identify the, uh, the best method to, uh, to support that from a prototyping standpoint. Also quantity is a big thing. You know, depending on how many parts you need, maybe that would uh, uh, lean toward one method or another. Um, typically, the lower quantity parts are going to be for the, the FDM 3D printing and the CNC machining just from a, a cost standpoint. Once you get up to maybe needing 10, 25, 50 and higher numbers, um, that's usually a better, uh, uh, a better fit for a rubber plaster mold or uh, investment casting option. Um, those can be fantastic options for prototyping, relatively low upfront tooling, um, and, and once you get to the little higher quantities, the, the part price becomes very attractive too. So it all depends on what you're looking for and, uh, and we can help guide you in the right direction. From a tool design, design standpoint, we, uh, we focus a lot on this. Uh, we apply, apply the industry best practices for, uh, for tool design and, and materials and specifications. Uh, we go into it looking, this is your die, you're paying for it. We want to get the longest life possible for you and to be cost effective for the application and the project and for us to run as smoothly as possible in production. Uh, the more that happens, the less uh, scrap, the less downtime, that type of thing, and it translates into a, a lower part cost for, for you and your project. Um, we also talk about, which we'll, we'll cover here in a minute, uh, we do a MagnaSoft flow simulation for every new part. And again, that's a, a fantastic way to help uh, uh, design the tool, design the part, and, and make it perfect for, uh, uh, for when it gets into production. And then lastly, we have uh, uh, vacuum assist on the majority of our, uh, of our machines. Uh, it's another way to, to help uh, uh, maximize the efficiency of the part and, and make it uh, run better in production. So just a, a quick slide about the MagmaSoft uh, flow simulation. 
Um, and I'll just point this out now. As, as with a lot of the topics in, in this presentation today, we have, uh, we, we've done sub-webinars uh, on, on a lot of them. And MagmaSoft was, uh, was one that we did a, 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 webinar, a full webinar on in the past. So if you've got more questions or like more details, that, that is available on our website. But it is a, a fully integrated portion of our uh, design approach. Uh, as I mentioned, we do this on every, um, every new project that we get in. And it really does help us uh, optimize the tool design and part design so that when it gets into production, it, is, uh, it gives us the best chance to have uh, uh, good parts from the start and ongoing. Um, it really helps define where you're going to put the gates and the runner system and the overflows and vents. Uh, and it, uh, it, it's actually, actually an amazing tool to, to help with that. It's also available as a standalone service. And what we mean by that is if you come to us early in a project design and, and you want to see kind of how the flow is going to be on the part and, and get that portion of it uh, ironed out before you take the next step into a full tool build, we can do that as a standalone service. We would quote you a, a cost to do that. And typically that cost will be uh, um, applied once you, you buy the full tool. So we'll basically rebate that price to you uh, or, or include it in, in the, uh, the full tool price. Um, but it can be done as a standalone service on its own if, if need be. Uh, and some of the things that, uh, that come out of the, the analysis, uh, metal flow, solidification, air entrapment, air, impre air pressure, um, all of those go into uh, helping us identify the best way to design the tool and to, uh, to maybe update or, or improve some features of the part design to help metal flow a little better if you have potentially a, um, a sharp corner or uh, you're transitioning from thin wall sections to thicker, back to thin. Sometimes that has uh, uh, big significance in how the metal flows, and making small changes in that can really affect and improve the uh, uh, the flow of metal in the tool. And lastly, I, I, on there is uh, improved surface finish characteristics, which is a biggie, actually. So if we if we know going into your project that it's going to be a highly cosmetic uh, uh, application, and you, the surface finish is going to be a uh, a big factor for you. We take that into, take that into account, and and we uh, we look at the results from the magma flow and make sure that okay, uh, metal is able to transfer from one side of the part all the way to the other, and uh, and you have a nice surface finish on the uh, on all over the part. So just something that if we know that ahead of time, we we take that into account and and look uh, uh, look at that during the magma uh, simulation. This next slide, just uh, just quickly, we uh, Chicago White Metal is very involved in a couple of the industry uh, organizations, the NATCA, North America Die Casting Association, as well as IMA, the International Magnesium Association, and they have uh, yearly uh, contests and for design and and uh, where you can submit a, a new application that might have something unique or um, something novel in the uh, in the die casting industry. And, and they'll give awards uh, each year for different categories. So this just uh, highlights the fact that Chicago White Metal is very involved in that, and we uh, uh, have won numerous awards over the years. And in fact, you can see 2016, we've got uh, a couple for, uh, for a MAG part uh, for NADCA as well as for IMA. Okay, so the next thing. So we've, uh, we've talked about engineering services. That's kind of the lead-in to die casting before you get the tool built. Uh, so now the tool is built, you're making parts, then, then what are the options for some value-added things that you could do uh, uh, after the tooling is completed? CNC machining is one. Um, and just this uh, is a quick uh, slide that shows the capabilities that we have internally uh, for, for CNC machining. You can see we've got 15 vertical, 3 horizontal, a uh, number of other uh, uh, drill and tap centers available, and again, all this is, uh, is in-house at Chicago White Metal. So we, uh, we're very familiar with CNC machining and have some great capabilities for it. And just as an example, look at a couple of, uh, of case studies or, or sample parts that, we, uh, that, that get a significant amount of machining. Uh, this is a part that's a, uh, a riser or a, hand, or a handle for a, a compound archery bow, and you can see the, the casting up top and see how it's used in the application. Uh, some of the goals for this project was uh, was a pretty short lead time, and you had to stay within budget, obviously. 
but it is also a very, very highly aesthetic part. And the customer, uh, typically these had been CNC machined from billet for production purposes at our customer. And the end users really liked the look of the billet, so they wanted to design something that, okay, it was a die cast part, but it want, they wanted to have the, uh, the finished look of a hog out or a, or a billet type uh, component. So um, that was a, a, the way it ended up, and it was a fantastic uh, project. And now we've got uh, three, four other um, similar type of parts uh, being produced for this customer. So it's a, it's a, fantastic, uh, uh, a fantastic project for us. And here you can see some, uh, some machining that's being done on this part. A couple of different, uh, uh, different options, I guess. First image is a traditional CNC uh, operation where you have a, a person or one of our team members uh, loading the part. That will then be transferred into the, uh, uh, the CNC machine and the in, in, internal. And then the, the operations uh, take place on the, on the machine, and then that gets unloaded by hand. Uh, we've changed that to, to some, for some of the applications where maybe a little higher volume uh, can justify it. But you can see on the bottom uh, bottom screen, we've got a robot pick and place that uh, uh, that takes the the part, loads it in the machine, and then takes it back out. So it uh, saves cost, and like I said, on higher volume applications, that's uh, what we try to do to uh, to get a little cost reduction. The next part is for a 3D printer. Um, that Chicago White Metal uh, makes for a company. Uh, you can see the, the top part is the actual component. It's an aluminum part. Uh, it was designed originally uh, as an eight-piece uh, CNC hogout assembly. And as you can imagine, that's pretty cost, costly and, and labor-intensive to, uh, to assemble together. So working with the customer, we were able to design this down to a single die-cast part. Um, Obviously, it was a huge cost save to the customer. We show 88%. It was probably actually more than that. Uh, eliminated assembly and components and that type of thing, which was fantastic. The, uh, the biggest challenge for this part was the amount of machining required in order to get a 2,000 flatness from corner to corner on this part. This, uh, this part has uh, uh, the drive heads uh, that ride along the sides. And so you can imagine that for a 3D printer, that accuracy is, is uh, super critical. So being able to, to do that amount of machining uh, and hold those tolerances was a challenge, mostly because this part, it's hard to tell on the screen, but it was about, uh, oh, 10 by 11 inches. So it's a pretty big part. It's got a big gap in the center section. And so as it comes out of the die cast machine, it tends to, uh, to warp a little bit and, uh, and, and have some potato chipping effect, if you will. So getting all that back flat was a, was a huge challenge. But uh, we were able to do it, had uh, this part go through a few different uh, uh, CNC operations and, uh, in order to achieve that 2000s flatness. So other than, uh, than CNC machines, we also have what we call uh, conventional or, or other uh, uh, dedicated machining cells that do reaming and drilling and tapping and that type of thing. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, here you can see an example of, uh, of a part that's loaded in a fixture. Uh, probably has yeah. looks like maybe 10 different operations going on at the same time. Uh, so very very cost effective. Um, if it's a drill tap operation in a bunch of different uh, areas of the part, um, this is more cost effective than than the CNC machine a lot of times because you're doing all these operations at once. Uh, the tooling for this tends to be a little higher than a CNC uh, setup just because it's a it's a dedicated uh, uh, tool uh, center for this, um, so it's a little bit, a little bit more expensive. Here's another example of, of a part that's loaded in a, um, in a uh, fixture and getting a reaming operation done. And then, lastly, is a uh, kind of an indexing uh, machining cell. So it's uh, it's got multiple uh, cavities or fixtures that the, operate, the part is getting transferred from station to station and getting a different operation completed on it. Uh, again, really, really good for high, uh, high volume or medium to high volume projects um, because it's very automated, very little labor that goes into it. Um, but again, the, the tooling investment is a bit higher or a bit costly just because of the, uh, uh, the number of uh, individual fixtures that are dedicated just for that part. 
Okay, so now we've got the part, we've got a cast, we've got it machined, and so we'll look at some of the different finishing uh, options that are available. Um, again, many of the, the things that are in this presentation were also covered in a previous webinar, um, but it's, this is a great overview of the different categories of uh, surface treatments available, and so we'll, uh, we'll go through it. Um, so the different things uh, that we're going to talk about, mechanical finishes uh, on a part, uh, the chemical finishes, the different coatings available, powder coating, painting, platings, um, impregnation is available if, uh, if a part needs to have a, a little more leak-tight leak uh, ability. And then we'll also look at uh, or talk about pad printing and silk screening that are available. So the, the various mechanical finishes that are available, um, there's a bunch of different types of shot blasting, uh, different media that's available, ceramic, plastic. Uh, you can ball burnish parts. Uh, glass bead is another option. And you can also hand polish and grind parts, which we'll look at some examples of that. Um, typically, what, what all these mechanical finishes uh, are, are achieving are uh, taking a cast part, which you can see on the bottom, they may have a, a layer of flash around, and reducing that flash, and as well as uh, um, doing a surface preparation. So depending on the type of media that's used, it'll have a little bit different finish. Um, but all of these are, uh, are really uh, nice ways to get a, a, a good look to your part without spending a whole lot of money on it. So if you look at the, uh, the, some of the mechanical uh, finishes for, for, uh, for a part, this is an aluminum part. Um, gets a, uh, an ox a light aluminum oxide blast. Um, again, there's many, many different types of shop blasting that's available for, uh, for parts where you can use steel or glass bead or stainless steel. All of them have uh, a little bit different resulting look to the part, um, and all of them, we, we typically will work with a customer to figure out the best media available depending on the alloy type as well. Some, some medias are a little too aggressive on various uh, alloys, so we'll work with you to make sure we're looking at the right, uh, uh, the right option. But all of these do a great job of cleaning up the surface, uh, burr removal. And the other thing that it does is it can be a very good preparation for a final top coat. So if you're going to get a powder coat or a wet paint applied, uh, the surface of a die casting really needs to have a nice preparation done to it, uh, various ways of doing that, which we talk about here. But uh, uh, a shop blast or other mechanical finishes is, is one way of doing that. Uh, next type is just a, a normal ceramic uh, vibratory deburr. Very, very standard process for die casting. Uh, helps tone down the sharp edges. Uh, puts a relatively uniform shine to the part. Uh, it's not something that we would consider a cosmetic finish by any means, but it, uh, but it, it does a great job of cleaning up the surface. Um, again, selection of the type of uh, media is important here. Um, you want to make sure something is sized correctly so it's not going to lodge inside these small holes that you see. So, so some of the things we take into account uh, uh, when looking at a vibe deburr, but there are, are dozens of different medias available, and we can help uh, uh, help determine that. Ball burnishing is another uh, another option. Again, a little shinier look to this actually, and this is done many times on uh, on zinc castings. Uh, so it makes a very very nice uh, uh, bright shiny part. Polishing your part is, uh, is another option. Uh, we typically look at this for when uh, an application is, has a very, very high cosmetic level. So what the polishing is, is you're physically taking a part and polishing away the parting line. So the gate vestige that was remaining, uh, the parting line, the actual parting line itself uh, gets removed and it gives a, gives a very, very nice um, edge to the part as well as, uh, in this case, the the part has been polished all over uh, to provide an, a, a nice surface um, preparation for the top coat uh, uh, that is applied after. So again, we consider this uh, this, this is a higher level of uh, uh, of preparation for for a top coat or a very or a very highly cosmetic component. So next, we'll look at the different chemical finishes that are available. Um, there's a number of them. All of these you can see in the picture. These, this, uh, all of these are electronically uh, or get racked on a on a racking system, um, have a electrical current flowing through them, and then get processed in a uh, a plating or a, a tank line. So we'll look at the different uh, 
different things that we show here from uh, simple clear chromates all the way to, uh, to the, a couple of other uh, unique uh, coatings that can be applied. So trivalent chromate, that's a, a Rojas compliant uh, uh, chromate that we, we put on a lot of parts. Um, it can, it's, uh, it's great for, uh, again, surface prep for a top coat. So we a lot of times we'll chromate a part and then put the powder coat or a wet paint on top of that. Um, it really, what it all is doing is converting the surface layer of, of the part. So it's very, very thin uh, layer that gets applied. I mean, almost immeasurable, it's so thin. So it's basically converting the surface um, of the part to, to, uh, to add, the, uh, add the layer. Uh, it's good for um, uh, a small amount of increased uh, corrosion protection that's applied. Um, so that, that is used a lot of times for that, but again, also for a, a surface prep for a paint that comes later. Hard coat anodized, another uh, great option, uh, relatively thin, maybe one-tenth of a thousandth of an inch, up to two-tenths, something like that. Uh, provides a bit higher level of corrosion protection than the chromate that we just looked at. Uh, also very, very uh, durable and, and wear resistant. And uh, as with the one before, it's, it's uh, conductive. So if you have an application that needs uh, uh, to be conductive, then, uh, then the chromate and the, the anodizer are, are good options. Anomag is a, uh, what we'd consider uh, an anodizing for magnesium alloys. It uh, results in what's uh, basically a ceramic layer uh, onto the part. Um, this is not conductive, so that's uh, something to keep in mind if that's a concern. Um, but offers very, very good corrosion protection uh, and is also a very hard and, and durable coating. Um, this gets used on both uh, military and, and commercial applications and is, uh, uh, for magnesium, a, a great option. IOSO coating is a, uh, a specific coating for zinc and steel, but in our case, uh, since we don't, we don't talk about steel, we'll, we'll look at it for zinc. Um, it's a, a coating that a company makes, um, again, specifically for zinc die castings, very, very good corrosion resistance uh, and very, very good wear resistance. So um, if there's an application, you can see this part in the screen has, uh, has some gear teeth uh, where wear might be a concern. So adding the IOSO uh, coating is, is a great option. Uh, it's very, very cost effective, especially on smaller parts. So the part in the screen here is maybe, whew, gosh, quarter of an inch long, maybe something like that. So it's a pretty small uh, small part. Um, but on smaller parts where you can do this in a, a bit more of a bulk type uh, operation, it's very, very cost effective. Acid etching, um, it's a very a pretty simple uh, uh, process where we're basically chemically cleaning the casting. Uh, it rusts up the surface. Um, and the reason we're doing that, again, is, is to uh, to prep the die cast surface for uh, for a final coat or a, uh, a a paint or a powder coat. That's a, been a pretty common theme that I've been talking about, and it's uh, it's something that we are uh, that is really very important for a die casting in order to get uh, the surface preparation so that the top coat would he, will adhere to the casting. Um, so we look to one of these options, whether it be acid etching or chromate or anodized, one of them. Uh, to try to, do, to try to accomplish that, so it's, it's a very very important factor that we uh, uh, that we look at when we're when we're looking at uh, a part. So we'll look at uh, quickly the the different coatings that are available um, from an eco powder coat, and some of the different uh, electroless nickel options, and then some of the plating options at the at the bottom. Okay, so eco. Um, the black finish, typically, there are starting to be other colors available, but black is, is uh, uh, predominantly what is available. Um, ends up being about a thousandth of an inch thick, so a little thicker application than what we've been talking about with the chromates and other, uh, uh, other options. Uh, good sulfate, salt spray protection, excuse me. Um, it's not something we would consider a cosmetic look. Um, many times it does have a nice, black appearance and even, but from batch to batch you can get some, uh, some differences in appearance and um, so it's not something we would, uh, we would consider overly cosmetic, but, but for some applications it, is, uh, it, it can be a, a good enough finish for what you're looking for. 
so the next, uh, next part is a, is a powder coated part. Um, again, this uh, now becomes a little thicker, so we're talking somewhere between two to three thousandths thick uh, when you get the, the powder coat uh, layer on it. Um, this is where we would get into what we would consider a decorative finish. Um, so this is a, a part that a, a customer needed a very decorative finish. They have a, a pad printing uh, graphics that are on there, you can see. Um, and this is a, a textured powder. So uh, in the powder itself, there's a texture that, uh, that is in it. And so when it's applied, it gives a nice uh, little texture look. There are different uh, amounts of texture that can be put in paints uh, or powders. And uh, so that's some things we can look at with you. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we'll recommend a, a powder or a paint even with, uh, with a, a small amount of texture. And what that does is it really helps... Uh, on the surface of, of a die casting, you'll see flow lines on, on uh, other surface imperfections that might be there. And the texture actually helps cover that up. Um, so as opposed to a, um, a flat, shiny finish uh, where some of those surface imperfections will come through, the, the nice texture, the small amount of texture will really help uh, uh, cover those up and so you won't see them. So many times we'll, we'll recommend if, if uh, if it's something that you're interested in, a, a small texture. Electrolytes nickel is another option. Um, as you can see, this gives a, uh, a bit shinier of an appearance. And, and this is kind of where, as I was talking about, you can almost see even on this part some of the surface uh, flow marks and, and other features of the surface of the, the die casting itself tend to stand out a little bit on shiny uh, with shiny finishes. So even with a nickel, uh, coating that's on this, some of those surface imperfections will uh, will show through. So just something to consider and, and um, get some samples from us, talk to us about what might be the best option, and we can uh, we can work through it with you. This isn't what we would consider a highly cosmetic look, more of a, a functional finish versus cosmetic, but it, it still gives a fairly nice uh, nice look to it. The PVD or physical uh, vapor deposition, another option. Um, again, this is about two to three thousandths thick, uh, and a relatively high cure temp required for this uh, this coating. So, um, where it may be suitable for a magnesium or aluminum application, it might not be as suitable for zinc. So, just something to to keep in mind. And and again, we'll we can work on that with you. Copper nickel chrome, very very nice looking finish. Uh, Good corrosion resistance. Um, a lot of times we use this on uh, on zinc applications, and this is a uh, uh, what we consider again an, a very highly cosmetic uh, finish to it. So again, nice uh, nice looking part. And then the, the normal nickel that's applied. Uh, many times this will be done with a uh, copper base la la uh, layer before the nickel. So copper nickel sometimes is is uh, generally more what is referred to. Um, we get a nice shiny finish, not quite as highly cosmetic as the, the nickel chrome we just talked about, uh, but another option for you. Uh, this slide just kind of shows uh, and where we talk about masking a little bit. Um, you can see here this is a relatively simple masking operation where the uh, you may have a, a pre-made piece of uh, cardboard or uh, a little rubber piece that fits over there and, and masks off. Uh, the areas that you don't want to have uh, have coated. Um, reason we show this is just to, to kind of point out the fact that masking sometimes is a big impact on uh, on the overall cost. So where this is a simple masking operation, it may not be a, a real cost uh, costly thing to do. There are times when we have to mask uh, a number of different features uh, in, in weird little areas, and and custom masks need to be made to do that. And so a lot of times the uh, the masking can really add up as far as the uh, uh, the overall cost of a of a surface finish or a surface uh, treatment. So just something to consider. If we can minimize the amount of masking uh, or make it a simpler thing to mask, then uh, many times that's a, a much more cost-effective way of doing it. Uh, the last one here is a, is a wet spray. Um, so this is where uh, instead of a powder coat, you actually have a wet paint that's being applied. Again, can come in a texture. Although the texture is usually applied as a uh, as a second uh, a second coating or uh, uh, 
something that's done after a base coat. So you'll put a, a wet base coat and then a, a, a textured layer on top of that, and sometimes even a, a third layer to seal it or, or to add some, uh, some increased durability. Um, a lot of times the, uh, the, wet, uh, the wet paints end up being a little more costly than, uh, than powders, which you'll see here in a second. So here we have a table that just shows the uh, relative costs of, uh, of all the different finishes. You can see on the left, you've got your mechanical finishes, shot glass, uh, different types of uh, glass bead, plastic media, uh, um, blasted parts. Uh, then the middle are the, the chromates and the anodized. Uh, with the non we, don't, we didn't talk about the non-chrome yellow in this, in this presentation, but that is a little bit of a flyer for cost. But, uh, and then the, the other coatings, the e-coat, uh, powder coat and wet paint on the right, so you can see how the uh, the relative uh, scale of cost. And uh, this was based on a, a specific part. So when you see the cost on the side of the left uh, uh, part of the graph, that was based on a specific part. A uh, specific part. So that's kind of how the the relative price came into play. Um, but again, you can you can see kind of where the uh, where the prices fall for the various coatings, and it's a it's a good graph to show. This next one we won't talk about in, in huge detail, but it is a uh, when you look at the different uh, platings, mostly that are that are available. That we talked about some of these, some of these we did not. Um, and we can we can certainly get a chart like this to you, or a, a comparable chart to show the different options available. Uh, shows a re relative uh, thickness on on the coating, um, relative number of salt spray hours that are uh, that can be achieved. Uh, these numbers are. are um, we kind of have to talk about them a little bit with you. They're based on uh, when you're coating a, a small little chip or a, a sample chip instead of the actual part, but it's a, it's a good relative uh, uh, indication of the salt spray hours that can be achieved, whether or not they're uh, real house compliant and the different alloys that, uh, uh, that these are recommended for. So whether they're magnesium only or all three, um, it gives a good indication. Okay, so as I mentioned before, so now we're we're through the coating operations, and maybe you've got some uh, some fasteners or other types of mechanical components that you'd like assembled to the part. So this is another type of value-added uh, um, capability that Chicago White Metal offers, um, and can be a really good uh, good option for you if you'd like for your part to come in as a subassembly. So we work really with any type of anything mechanical we can we can work with. Uh, fasteners, other plastic components, stampings, uh, a lot of gaskets that we do for, for people that need a, uh, a gasket applied to their parts, uh, all the way down to labels and packaging and, and even complete kitting for people if the uh, die casting needs to come with some screws and in a little, bla in a little bag, um, you know, that, that can be done too. So just, just keep that in mind and, and you know, nothing is uh, out of the realm of possibility. Uh, for, for things that we can do from an assembly standpoint. So just a couple of pictures of our assembly department where we're assembling some fasteners to, uh, to various die cast parts. Here we're pressing in a, uh, a roll pin onto a, uh, onto a component, and we talk about that part here in a little bigger scale. So that, uh, that one part you saw on the previous screen is actually a, uh, one of... Uh, a component that goes into this full subassembly that we provide. So you can see on the bottom, there's a, uh, a ring part. So that is actually three very large aluminum cast parts that are assembled together um, after we powder coat it and, and some other operations. And then uh, we supply that part just like it, it looks to the customer. So it's fully assembled for the customer. It's got labels. It's got tags. It's got uh, pretty much everything uh, everything needed for uh, for the customer to take it and, and apply it to their product, which in this case is a uh, a cartridge filter system for a, uh, a swimming pool. So that's a a large cartridge uh, filter. Uh, the next part we're going to show just real quick is a uh, um, component. This is a, a made out of ZA8, which is a, a zinc aluminum uh, alloy. Eight percent aluminum is what the eight stands for. And this is a relatively small part um, that we uh, assembled together with a, a steel rod and some other components. And it's used for a, uh, uh, a racking system um, for solar panels. So this gets assembled and then allows the, uh, uh, the solar panels to uh, 
to rotate and, and follow the sun and move to the position that they need. So really good example of some, uh, some assembly work that we do, uh, help the customer lower their cost overall for, uh, for the project, um, and it's a really good project. So we'll look at some of the custom packaging, uh, just real quick, that we can that we can do, um, for all the way from the simple bulk pack where we uh, place parts into a, a a box that are their parts are sitting on each other, uh, potentially layer pack where uh, uh, you have a, a divider in the box to, to to separate layers of the parts, to cell packing where you which is what you see in the pictures where each individual part is is in a, a cell of its own. Uh, many times that's going to be used for highly cosmetic parts that you don't want the parts banging around or parts with uh, with relatively thin features potentially that you don't want and, and uh, the part to, to bang and, and damage itself uh, during shipment. And then there's other uh, examples of, of completely custom solutions that we can make for, uh, for, for a customer where um, if you remember that part we showed a little while ago, the 3D printer frame, that one had some features sticking out of the side that was just kind of difficult for us to figure out how to package them in a, in a standard box and standard solution. Uh, so we designed a completely different uh, uh, packaging type for that um, where it actually was uh, the part is being held down inside the box to prevent uh, uh, it shifting during, uh, during package or during shipment, excuse me. So we'll look at, at some of the advanced uh, quality inspection processes that can be done. Again, this, these are other uh, value-added operations that can be uh, can be done. Leak testing of parts, um, X-ray of parts, and then some custom gauging options that are available. So leak testing. So if you've got an application that uh, needs to be leak-free or at least uh, meet a, a, a leak specification, um, we can certainly uh, design a uh, leak station to accommodate that. So you see the pictures. These are two different uh, two different leak test stations. Uh, the one on the left has got a um, a two cavity or two fixture setup, and the one on the right has a four cavity or, or four fixtures that are being tested at the same time. So um, if it's a higher volume thing, we may we may do multiple cavities just to to get the throughput higher and be more cost effective. Um, but it, but these are, are Great fixtures and great options if you have to have a, uh, a part that's, that's tested uh, uh, for air. Uh, pressure decay um, fixtures are most of them, but we all can do also do pressure rise if, if need be. And the uh, uh, all the fixtures are capable of, of gathering and, and collecting and analyzing the data from from the test. X-ray is an option. Um, it's not something we would consider uh, real cost-effective to do if you're looking for it to be done 100%. But uh, uh, certainly, um, if you've got some questions or, or we want to take a look at what's inside a die casting, X-ray uh, uh, can be done. Um, Chicago White Metal prefers to kind of look at, at this from the opposite direction and see what we can do to prevent uh, pr internal porosity and, and uh, uh, that type of thing inside a part. So we we focus a, a lot of time and effort on the, the tool design and the magma flow that we talked about and um, trying to minimize this from the start. But if, if need to be done um, at the end and take a look at uh, the internal cross-section of a part for, for porosity, we can certainly do that. And then lastly, uh, custom gauging. So uh, you've got the part all finished. Um, you want to make sure that it's uh, all the features are, are correct before it uh, uh, it leaves the head and heads to the customer. Um, so we do a number of different types of custom gauging um, for different customers, from simple go no go no go gauges, uh, all the way to much more complex, um, uh, where the dimensions are being taken automatically on a part. That those dimensions are stored and analyzed and can be uh, uh, shared with the customer. So it's a it's a nice thing to offer if uh, if, if this is something that's a requirement for you. So just in summary, um, as we've tried to mention today, uh, casting is really only one part of the overall process. And, and we really uh, want you to think about the different things that can be done um, either before or, or after a casting is, is created uh, to add value for you. And uh, the, the, it ends up being that the value added processes can be a much, uh, a much bigger percentage of the overall part cost. 
Um, so it's one thing we really focus on working with the customer to, to determine the best options available to, to do to have a cost effective overall cost effective project for you. Um, so we would recommend partnering with a diecaster who can provide the full range of services. Um, so you can look from soup to nuts and see where things can be uh, uh, optimized to, to, to reduce cost. And as we've mentioned many times, uh, the more we know of a project, the, the more we can help you. So if you discuss with us uh, all the aspects of your project uh, ahead of time, uh, that helps us uh, to really uh, focus on where we can reduce cost and, and um, get the most out of the project for you. And as we say, even the very small details can have a big impact on, uh, on the overall cost. So a couple of references, uh, reference materials that we'll send out uh, following this, uh, uh, the presentation today. Uh, the product design for die casting uh, publication that, uh, uh, that NADCA puts out. And then also the, uh, um, we'll send a link to the Surface Finishes webinar um, that, was, uh, that was recorded previously. So uh, look out for that link and uh, you know, feel free to, uh, to, to look around our, our die casting uh, uh, Design Center portion of our website, and uh, with a, a bunch, bunch more information that's on there. And here's the the website for the the DC2 Design Center that we have, um, with many, many different uh, webinars, design guides, that type of thing that are available. And then lastly, here's my contact information. As I mentioned, if there's uh, any questions or anything else that comes up that you'd like to discuss with us after the presentation is over, please don't uh, don't hesitate to let me know. Um, I'll leave this, uh, this last page up here for you to, uh, to write down and, and uh, take my info down in case you need it. As I mentioned, we'll keep the, presentation, or the, the webinar running um, for some time after the presentation is over, so feel free to keep uh, submitting your questions uh, through the website and we'll, uh, we'll get back to you. So thank you very much for attending today. I uh, hope you got a little sense of the different value-added operations that, that can be done on die castings. And, uh, Again, if you have any questions, please don't, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much.